dear students today we are going to study the chapter the living organisms and their surroundings which is chapter 9 of your science ncert class 6 book we all know that plants and animals live in different places such as forest mountains deserts sea grassland and many more but do you know what is this place actually called yes the surroundings where organisms live is called a habitat there are mainly two groups of habitats they are the terrestrial habitat and the aquatic habitat terrestrial habitats are habitats which are found on land for example forest grasslands mountains and deserts on the other hand aquatic habitats are habitats found basically in water like pond lakes rivers oceans sea etc every habitat has certain components on which it depends living things like plants and animals constitute the biotic components of a habitat whereas non living things like air water humidity soil sunlight and heat constitute the abiotic components in this picture you can see both the abiotic and biotic component are living together in an ecosystem the presence of specific features or certain habits which enable a plant or an animal to live in its surroundings is called the adaptation now let us see the adaptations of desert plants and animals by taking an example of a camel camel have long legs to keep their body away from heat they lose very little water from their body they can live for many days without water so now you know why camel is called the ship of the desert There are desert animals like rats and snakes which do not have long legs that a camel has to stay away the intense heat during the day but these animals stay in burrows deep in the sand they only come out when there is night or when the atmosphere is little cooler so in the picture you can see a rat and a snake This figure shows some typical plants that grow in a desert. Now how are these adapted to the desert? The leaves of this plant, cactus, are modified into spines to reduce loss of water. The stem prepares food. That is why the stem is little fleshy. The stem is also covered with a waxy layer to reduce loss of water. The roots are long long deep in the soil to absorb water after desert adaptation let us move forward towards adaptation of mountain trees and animals in this beautiful picture you can see trees fully covered with snow these trees are cone shaped having sloping branches which helps rain water and snow to slide off easily they have long thin and needle like leaves which are not at all affected by wind if you live in a mountain region or have visited one you may have seen a large number of yaks and snow leopards in the mountain region yes in this picture you can see a yak yak have thick skin and long hair on their bodies to protect them from cold and to keep their body warm similarly snow leopard has thick fur on its body which keeps it warm during the winter season in this slide you can see the beautiful picture of a snow leopard though this looks like a cat but don't get confused it is not a cat it has a thick skin in on their body feet and toes are covered with fur to protect them from snow now let us see this beautiful white mountain goat mountain goats have strong hooves 
to climb up the rocky mountains. Now let us move forward to the habitat of grasslands. A lion lives in a forest or a grassland and is a very strong animal that can hunt and kill animals like deer. Lions have light brown colored body to help them to hide in the grassland. The front legs have claws which help them to hunt and kill their prey. They have eyes in the front to easily see their prey. In this picture, you can see an animal, lion, is hunting its prey. A deer is another animal that lives in forest and grassland. You can see the picture of a deer here. It has strong teeth for chewing hard plant stems of the forest. A deer needs to know about the presence of predator in order to run away from them and not become their prey. It has long ears to hear movement of predators like lion and tiger. The eyes on the side of its head allow it to look in all directions for danger. The speed of the deer helps him to run away from the predators. This was all about the adaptations of terrestrial habitat. Now let us move towards the adaptation of aquatic animals and plants. Let us first discuss the adaptation of a fish. You can see in the picture the fish has a streamlined body. The streamlined body of fish helps them to swim in water. They also have fins which help them to move in water. Do they have respiratory organ like lungs with them? No. They have gills as their respiratory organs which help them to use oxygen dissolved in water. There are also some sea animals like squids and octopus which do not have this streamlined shape. So how do they stay in water? They stay deeper in the ocean near the seabed and catch any prey that moves towards them. However, when they have to move in water, they make their body shape streamlined. These animals also have gills to help them use oxygen dissolved in water. Some other sea animals like dolphins and whales do not have gills. They breathe in air through nostrils or blowholes that are located on the upper parts of their head. This allows them to breathe in air when they swim near the surface of water. They can stay inside the water for a long time without breathing. But they come out to the surface from time to time to breathe in air. Did you ever see this interesting activity of dolphins in television program or films on ocean life? Now let us look at the adaptations of ponds and lakes habitat. Have you seen plants growing in ponds, lakes, rivers and even some drains? Have you seen frogs living both in water and on land? They are called amphibians. Amphibians are organisms that can live both on land and in water. Frogs have strong back legs which help them to leap and catch their prey. They have webbed feet as you can see in the picture which helps them to swim in water easily. Aquatic plants like lotus, water hyacinth have their roots fixed in the soil. Their stems are very strong, hollow and light. Their leaves float on water. Some aquatic plants are totally submerged in water. Their leaves are thin or divided and are not at all damaged by the flow of water. In the two pictures, you can see beautiful lotus and the big waxy coated leaves. Now, let us look at the characteristics of living things. Living things like we, like the animals, insects, plants, they show movement. Animals can move from one place to another, but plants cannot move from one place to another. Living things need food, they grow, they respire, they respond to stimuli. Now, what is the meaning of respond to stimuli? 
Stimuli are the changes in the surroundings to which living things respond. Suppose, for example, whenever you switch on the light in the kitchen, you will see cockroach moving away from light. Similarly, when you try to touch the touch me not or chui mui plant, it gets folded up. As the plant grow, it bends towards light. Do you know which plant I am talking about? Yes, I am talking about the plant of sunflower. It moves towards light. So this is called response to a particular stimulus. Living things excrete waste products. Excretion is a process by which waste products are removed from the body. Another important characteristics of living things is they reproduce their own kind. Some living things produce by giving birth to the young ones like dog, cat, humans. Some living things reproduce by laying eggs like birds, fishes, insects. Many plants reproduce through seeds. Some plants reproduce through other parts like stem, root or leaf. The plant which reproduces with the help of stem is rose, which reproduces through root is dahlia, and the plant which reproduces through leaf is bryophyllum. Thank you for patiently listening to the video.